today is, can faith help us understand suffering? We live in a world full of suffering, don't we? This is one of those questions that's always relevant and always pertinent. Suffering affects us individually. It affects us in communities, in societies. It affects us globally. We can suffer as part of a group or we can suffer as individuals. Suffering comes in many forms and looks different for all of us, but we have all experienced it and we will all continue to experience it. Some of us here today will be in the midst of significant suffering right now. Physical, social, psychological, emotional. Today we want to consider what different faiths have to say about the nature of suffering and how religion can help or hinder our understanding and experience of it. How, as people of faith and people of no faith, ought we respond to suffering both in our own lives and in the world around us? Uh, turn the page. Okay, so a little word about how today is going to work. Our dialogue will begin with our four speakers presenting their point of view and their, religious, their religion's point of view on the question for today. After they've all had a chance to speak, I'm going to pose some questions to the panel, some to the panel generally and some to individual panellists. And then after that, there'll be a chance for anybody in the room, shall we call this a room, uh, to ask questions, either specific or general. If you would like to ask a question, please feel free to do so. But please remember that we're here to learn respectfully from each other. Let us be an example today to our university of how religion can be discussed and debated rigorously, but without hostility or conflict. I'm going to start by welcoming Rabbi Eli to begin our dialogue. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, the, the downside of coming, uh, getting up first is that you can't retort what anybody else said. <laughs> Uh, but uh, I'm sure, as, as you said, we'll have that opportunity later. Um, I decided to bring a prop today uh, because, for a few reasons, and I'll explain why. Um, does anybody know what this is? Yes? Pardon? It is a ram's horn, indeed. Uh, this is a ram's horn, and uh, why would I be holding it at this time of year? Would anybody know? Thank you very much. We've got the Jewish New Year coming up. So people have heard of the Chinese New Year. Uh, of course, there's the Gregorian New Year on, on the 31st of December at midnight. Uh, but people aren't so familiar with the Jewish New Year. In fact, we as Jews have our own calendar as well, which is similar to the Muslim calendar that it goes by the, uh, the lunar cycle. Uh, but it's different to the Muslim calendar in that we adjust it to the solar cycle. Uh, so we try and keep our holidays around the same type of year, time of year every year every year and it's a quite a complex calendar uh, but uh, in a couple of weeks time will be the Jewish New Year and one of the things we do at the time of the Jewish New Year was we blow this ram's horn, it's sort of like heralding in the New Year and uh, there's many reasons why we do it and I'm not going to go into all of them uh, today but in the month leading up to Rosh Hashanah which is the name for the day of the Jewish New Year, the head of the year it's called Rosh Hashanah in the uh, month leading up to that day or those two days uh, we actually blow, every day we blow the shofar. Uh, it's called a shofar. That's what the, the ram's horn is called. S-H-O-F-A-R. Uh, you can Google it if you want to find out more about it. And we blow the shofar every day for this month coming up to Jewish New Year. Uh, what does it have to do with suffering? I'll explain that very soon because it's got to be relevant, right? So I'm going to first start off by actually blowing it. Uh, there's actually, it, it's about a 20 second, um, it's about a 20 second bracket where we, we blow the shofar uh, for during this month. It's got a few different sounds and uh, I've practiced and, you know, practice makes perfect, although it wouldn't sound perfect, but uh, we're getting there. So I'm going to blow the shofar for about 20 seconds and I'm going to explain how it connects to suffering. What, what's the time slot that we've got? About seven minutes. Okay. I got two. Okay. So I've got another five. Just making sure I'm within my time frame, which is good. Okay, so I'm going to blow the show for now. I don't need the, uh, this, this is actually quite a loud instrument, so I won't need the microphone for it.
end up in a, in a, with a bang. The last blow is the long one, and uh, extra points for d depending on how long you can do it for. So um, it's called the Takiyah Gadola, the long blow. So we've been doing this as Jewish people for 3,300 years. That's a long time. Uh, that's uh, how long we've been doing this for. And if I try to blow the shofar from this side, which means I'm blowing it from the, from the narrow end, right? This small little hole here, and the, and the air is coming through, and it's vibrating along inside the horn until it comes out the, the wide space on the top. Now, what happens if I try and blow the shofar from this side? Nothing. Does anybody know why is it that if I blow from this side, I get a sound, whereas if I, blow, if I try and blow as hard as I might from the wide space, I'll get nothing? Anybody here know anything about music? Musical instruments, wind instruments? Why is it that if I try and blow from the wide end, it, it ain't going to make a sound? Any suggestions from the crowd? Okay, so it's a very simple um, uh, phenomena in physics, and that is that you can't make a sound without vibration. Vibration is when the air vibrates uh, against some other things. In this instance, it's the, wall, it's the uh, walls of the, of the horn. Uh, it'll come through and make a sound. Whereas if there's no vibration, if, if there's too wide a space, then the vibration isn't strong enough to make the air turn into noise. So there is a verse that we say from Zams, those who are Christian or, or Jewish or anyone who's uh, familiar with the, with the Bible, would be familiar with Zalm's chapter, um, chapter 118, verse number 6, where it says, From the straits I will call out to God, and God will answer me from a vast expanse. And we actually say this in the Hebrew, uh, after we blow, before we blow the shofar, we say this verse. And the idea is that we're blowing from the straits. We're blowing from the very... Um, tight space which is in this small little hole here that's causing the vibration of the air and then it's the it's coming out and making the sound and this is a metaphor for life ladies and gentlemen the idea of the straits is this constraints that the air is going through this very tight space and has anybody ever heard the expression between a rock and a hard place in life, we can often feel like we're between a rock and a hard place. We can often feel like when we're going through suffering, when we're going through a difficult time, we feel like we're constrained. We, you know, we've got nowhere to go. We're, we've got this pressure, this, whether it's a financial pressure or, or a health pressure or a work pressure or a family pressure, whatever it may be, we feel constrained. We feel, you know, we feel like, where's our freedom? You know, we're, we're, being, we're, being, um, uh, we're suffering as a result of, of, of this, 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 this difficulty. And that's like the the entrance of the chauffeur. That's like the, the very tight space, the tight spaces in our lives that we go through. But ultimately, what comes as a result of those tight spaces? What comes is the music, ladies and gentlemen. Without that constraint, without that difficulty, you'll never get the music out of the chauffeur. And really in life, it's the same thing. And that's really the Jewish uh, approach to suffering, is that we see it as a stepping stone to something better, to something greater, to something positive that if you look at any great endeavor in life, nothing is achieved without pain. I was discussing this with my dear wife who's here today, uh, Elka, and uh, we were discussing this yesterday about the, the old uh, advertising campaign for exercise was no pain, no gain. You know, I've never seen anybody achieve greatness in exercise without, with, in sports, without putting in a lot of effort and going through pain. You know, you, you only really get the benefit from running when you start to sweat, when you start to feel the pain. And the same thing is with, University. Nobody gets